Hey, it's Troy Holder here from beautiful Barbados. I'm going to be joining Prosper on the Prosper um, Prosperity Show. And we're going to be having a fantastic time. We're going to be talking about branding. I'm going to be sharing nuggets of gold that you do not want to miss if you want to make 2022 your year of phenomena. So look forward to sharing with you. Make sure that you follow Prosper because this is one way to become prosperous. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've got none other than Troy Holder, a branding coach, marketing trainer, and speaker with a passion for empowerment. Troy, how are you doing today? Hey, Prosper, man. I'm doing really, really great. I'm glad to be on your show. Um, it's an honor to be a part of your distinguished guest. And I'm looking forward to an exciting interview. <laughs> Fantastic. We've been trying to uh, tie up times for the past four years just so that we could have uh, this call. But obviously, since yes. you are in tropical Caribbean paradise of Barbados, yes. you obviously constantly on holiday, right? So I'm glad I caught you uh, while you've got a bit of time for us to have this show today. Yes. Yeah, well, the truth of fire is prosper. It's not all holiday. It's a holiday for those who are um, coming to the destination for the sun to see um, the sunshine, the, you know, awesome attractions. But for those of us who live here, we got to work. So I got to get up every morning and I got to hit the hustle because after all, um, I have five mouths to feed. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, obviously you understand our show is all about bringing you people that are good at what they're doing and they are also creating businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. And Troy, like I mentioned earlier, is a branding coach and a marketing trainer. He's also a speaker who absolutely has a passion for people. All right. I mean, I, you can understand him coming in from Barbados. He's constantly meeting, um, you know, uh, tourists that are coming to the world. But his main focus and strategies and ideas have actually helped businesses within, uh, in and around the world to, you know, generate over 2.5 billion in combined sales. And that's a lot of money and a lot of speaking and a lot of branding in order to be able to be to and have that sort of, um, you know, yeah. reputation. Now, Troy actually empowers entrepreneurs and small business owners, women founders and independent professionals to actually amplify their personal and corporate brand into marketing. And today we're just going to be leaning towards how he actually got into this uh, flair instead of basking in the sun with a pina colada on his novel uh, sitting on a beach in Barbados, but he goes out and builds businesses to a tune of $2.5 billion. Now, Troy, just give us a brief outline of how you got started and um, where what it is we should expect from you sort of in the future there. Yeah, well, it's, it's amazing you answer that question because when I think about where I got started, uh, it, it all happened at 14 years old, 14 year old, 14 years old. I was like, how am I going to get a job? How am I going to get money? I mean, I'm about to finish school. And it hit me. Hey, you know what? The best way to get a job is to make one for yourself. And then I got thinking of all the other persons who will have this talent of getting a job. And I thought, well, if I can create a business, then my kids, I mean, at that time I had none, um, could actually have the opportunity to get the work experience. So 14 years old, I started thinking of a business. By the time I was finishing college, I had already um, decided I was going to start a design agency because while most people know me for branding and marketing, I actually started as a graphic designer. And I've decided then, hey, this is what I want to do. But here was a challenge, Prosper. I was speaking to clients about graphic design services and what they were asking for and what they needed just didn't gel. There were two different things. So I needed to speak to them, learn their language. So I started to explore the marketing because that was a natural um, partner for the design service I was, I was offering. So by the time I started involved in marketing and I got involved in you know, teaching the marketing, I got involved in consulting. And as we're helping businesses grow, I recognized the businesses were growing, but the people who were working in the businesses were not growing. 
they were stagnant. And then I recognized, well, hey, what I need to do is to start to empower these individuals so that they recognize their value, their worth. They recognize that they have a message and they can contribute to the development of not only of their companies, but in their society, in their communities. And then the pandemic happened. And with that, what it meant then is that more persons who are now underemployed or unemployed needed now to be able to find ways to use their skills and talents and abilities to generate revenue. And that is where their personal brand is because after your health, your personal brand is your next most valuable asset. And I'm helping individuals, especially for females, because I have a passion for people. And I'll be very honest with you. I'm really tired of women being trapped in unhealthy relationships. And I honestly believe if I can help a woman uh, be able to monetize her ideas, monetize her, her knowledge, her wisdom, her passion, then she's able to make better decisions for herself and her offspring. So that's why I'm all about the personal branding, focusing on personal branding, helping females, you know, be able to amplify their brand so that they can get to the next level and live their desired lifestyle. That's it in a nutshell. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Is, is, is this nutshells, coconuts? Because you're an island boy, right? So I want to make yes. sure. <laughs> yeah. So good, good coconuts with nice water, cool, refreshing coconut water. Absolutely. Talking yeah. about being an island boy and everything else that would have come along with you growing up. So you taking on graphic design, was it because you're a good artist? Because I know a lot of people that are in the islands are always painting and drawing and making really good mm -hmm. art. Would that have transitioned to you being a graphic designer or what would have happened for you there, uh, Troy? Most people would be shocked to know that I cannot draw. <laughs> I cannot I have made a, a successful living for 15 years as a graphic designer. I graduate top of my design class and I cannot draw. I mean, I was not that kid who was always doodling. As a matter of fact, in high school, I only did art for like two years. And that's because like, I knew that I wasn't very good at Spanish. But here's what I discovered. What I was very good at was solving problems. And I recognized that the graphic design was not about being able to draw well or being able to paint. Now those areas help, but it was really about solving communication problems visually. And I was like, wow, so I don't need to be able to draw. Uh, so there's an area in design called typography where you're designing with text and letters. And that became my specialty because I was very good at the technical drawing and engineering drawing. I was very good in terms of problem solving. So. I did very well in, in, in chemistry and biology. So when you, when you will have experiments and you're, you're testing a hypothesis and you're looking at solutions, finding solutions, I was always very good at finding solutions. So I was able to find a solution uh, for my inability to draw to be able to still succeed in my design assignments. And the lesson here is that oftentimes what we think is required isn't necessarily what is, re is what is required. We need to be able to look beneath the surface and identify what it is that people really need. Because when you know what people really need, um, it's going to be easier to find out what they want or what they desire. And I'm seeing this here, Pastor, because right now there are persons who are listening to us, who have a passion, who have an interest, they want to start, and they have not started because they believe that they don't have everything that they would like. And I'm saying, you don't need to have everything. You just need to have what is required to start. So your wants and your desires are not essential. It's your needs. Uh, and that is critical. Absolutely. And I, I love that statement. And, you know, because what, what, what people really, really want is not specifically what it is that they need eventually to actually be to and have a happier um, existence. And from what I know and from what I've seen your work, you are generally um, you've been doing this for over 17 years and you've been a marketing and business trainer. Now, how do you separate the whole luxury and holiday feel, um, you know, that Barbados, um, you know, embodies to actually 
sitting down and concentrating and working on a business that's profitable and enjoyable because I think I'll be on a permanent holiday if I lived in Barbados <laughs> like you do there, sir. Prosper, I'm a person of integrity and I like to be transparent. There was a time where I felt that I was not good enough. And I felt it wasn't good enough because here I was in the Caribbean and I'm trying to tell people about marketing. Now, when you think about a Caribbean, you're thinking holiday, you're thinking rum punch and pina colada and lazy days on the beach. You're not thinking of uh, any authority figure. You're not thinking of anyone who's gonna be serious about business. And then uh, because that was a challenge, I was like, okay, I'm a, sol I'm a problem solver. I need to resolve this problem. I love where I am. You know, there are people who were saying to me, hey, you need to travel. You probably need to migrate to UK or the North America. And perhaps saying people will take you serious. But guess what I did, Prosper? Guess what I did? I took the sun, the sea, and the, the luxury and the tropical paradise and the diamond glittered beaches. And I combined that into my branding. And I now encourage persons, hey, if you amplify your brand, then you can actually have this lifestyle. So I often ask persons, imagine what it would be like to be able to spend weeks at a time on such a tropical paradise with your family and friends before having to worry about how to pay for it. So the very same thing that was holding me back is the very same thing that now propels me. And I'm encouraging persons to help. It, it is indeed a paradise. Beautiful sunsets. I mean, it is yes, awesome oh I, and that is why you need to that is why prosper you need to really enhance your personal brand because when you enhance your personal brand it's going to make it easier for you to generate the clients that you want and the clients that you want is going to pay you what you require which now allows you to have more money to make better choices choices like flying to the car being for a month or two you know to just enjoy it before having to worry about oh my how am I going to afford this? Because I will tell you, the Caribbean is not cheap. <laughs> Visiting or living, it is not cheap. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, and I really respect people like yourself that have actually embodied who they are and taken the environment to actually help them be, do, and have a happier existence and also embody that into a personal brand. Because some people have a lot of stuff in their backyard, but they are too timid or shy. And here in Australia, we call it the tall poppy syndrome, where a lot of people don't actually look at what they have. They're always looking at the grass is greener at other people's side and not creating a personal brand just simply based on who they are and who they've become. Now, we've just come through a uh, pandemic and obviously you have sustained and you have actually managed to go past it simply because you created something that a lot of people fail uh, to possess, which is a personal brand. Just walk us through why it's important nowadays to create more of a personal brand than to brand your business or your products. Well, the truth in fact is um, there are many individuals who are offering the same product, offering the same service, offering it in the same shoe, I mean, a, a lot of the services become commodities. So the functional, the functional goods, functional services are the same. What is now going to distinguish us is the emotional product. I mean, how do you make your clients feel? How do clients feel about doing business with you? I mean, do they like you? Do they trust you? Do you make people feel special? Do you treat each customer like your only customer? This is what makes the difference. So the emotional product that you're offering, only you can offer it, only Prosper can offer the emotional product like you because there's only one Prosper. There's only one Troy Holder. So what I encourage persons to do is to amplify their personal brand, let their themselves, let the real through them, let the authentic individual come forth and infuse that into whatever you're doing. So your personality becomes a part of whatever you're offering. And people who like you, people who respect you, people who appreciate what you're doing, they are gonna be happy to work with you. They're gonna be happy to pay you. They're gonna be happy to be your ambassadors. They're gonna be happy to promote your brand. That is why repositioning and developing and amplifying your personal brand, no more than ever, 
is critical because there's only one you. So why not maximize it? Oh, absolutely. I, I love that, <laughs> you know, how you allude to there's only one of you and you are a market of one, but some people tend to just become a me too brand out there. Now, obviously with that being said, there now comes an issue, um, you know, of relevance, you know, staying consistent to that personal brand and consistently showing up and putting content out there. You've been doing it well for the last 17 years. Just walk us through how you've managed to stay on top of your game, stay relevant and actually keep producing content and um you know helping others uh to stay and and and, repos and and reposition their brands well i'm very fortunate i, I mean and i understand i'm very blessed um, because my passion my purpose and my profession are aligned so what i do for pay i can easily do for free so it makes it very easy so i will say to individuals rather than just follow the gurus and just doing what they're saying, look for ways that and identify what it is that you really enjoy. I mean, do you really like helping people? I mean, do you really like developing? Do you like creating content? Do you like innovating? Find what it is that you like to do and find the problems that what you enjoy doing resolved. Then you package it. You package it in a way that people want it because oftentimes it's, it's not what it is that you're offering, it's for its package. So we need to reposition our brand. And as we're repositioning our brands, make sure that our packaging are in alignment with our brand, make sure that our offerings are in alignment and be true to ourselves. Now, over the years, Prosper, I've listened to many um, gurus. I've read many books, I've attended many courses and seminars and conferences and workshops. And I'm seeing many individuals try to imitate what those on stage are doing. The truth in the fact is that if I try to imitate you, I'm going to fail because I'm going to be a copy. So why imitate someone when you have someone that you can be authentic about? You can be authentically you. So I encourage individuals, reposition your brand now more than ever before. Think about being relevant. Think about generally helping people because now that is what is needed. People need help. We need to be able to help people. It was... It was Zig Ziglar says, who said, um, the best way to get what you want is to give enough people what they need. Oh, absolutely. You satisfy people's needs. The love reciprocity uh, is still very powerful. People remember those who are helpful to them. Oh, absolutely. Look at Pareto's 80 20 law. 20% 20, 20 of the people that you help will forget you, but 80 will remember. And of the 80 remember, 20 are going to want to do business with you. Uh, that is what's going to be the difference maker going forward. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, you get uh, me excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point. Because at the end of the day, we're here to leave, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And the more that you are living your best life, I mean, obviously for you, it's inevitable, you're in Barbados, but you've learned how to actually be, do, and have a happier existence. And now all you're doing is contributing that so that others can also experience that too. You know what I mean? Um, there's one there's one thing that normally comes um you know in, in in up in in topics like this you've talked about contribution you've talked about value and being um you know relevant how is it that you are actually um helping others um or how are you guiding and supporting uh, people that would come to you yeah well a lot of the work i'm doing in personal brand branding is mindset shifting it's amazing the amount of individual who have first degrees, masters, they are senior level professionals. They have 10, 15 years experience in their field, but they still have some self-defeating mentalities that are holding them back. And in many cases, it's because of their socialization. So when I help an individual to recognize, look, what you have is significant. That right now there are individuals who are waiting on you. They're ready to buy what you are offering. They're ready and they're waiting on you to, to help them to take the next step. There's one thing that we have to remember. There are things that you know very well that you probably take for granted. You probably think, hey, no one wants to know. But there are individuals who want that very same information. So while you may think, hey, this is of no value, it is far more valuable than you think. 
So helping individuals to get over those hurdles, helping them to get started, like working with female clients and trying to get them in front of the camera because obviously of the self-defeated mentality, they have challenges with how they look, how they sound, um, they worry about what people will say. So there's a fear factor. So it's all a lot of mind work. But when you recognize that, hey, look, only you can do the job that you have been created to do. And I know so many people say that, and some we hear it, but I want people to really and truly believe it. You have been placed on this earth for a purpose. You need to impact, you need to empower, you need to bring about change. So you're only gonna do that is if you take action. You know what, I'll be first to tell you, not all of my strategies work. I've had strategies that have fall flat. I've had strategies that just burst. I've actually created seminars and marketed seminars where no one attended, even though it was a free event. You know what I did? I got in the room, I, I mean, I had a lot more than enough food. Uh, I'd already paid for the room. I got in that room and I created the outline for the next event. <laughs> And I will tell you the outline and the marketing plan and the next event was a success. So you will feel, but you need to get up and get going again. Fulfill your purpose, man. Fulfill your purpose. Absolutely. That's what we, each of us need to do. Absolutely. I, I absolutely love what you're saying there, uh, Troy, because at the end of the day, um, a lot of us, when we get started in this uh, business, we might have a goal or vision or maybe it's some sort of a passion. But like you said, you're going to be uh, facing a lot of trials and tribulations. Maybe you put up an event and nobody shows up, um, but you just got to keep going and keep going. No, you're also helping sort of people really uh, brand um, themselves for desired life. And you then showed us that some of the methods that were working before are no longer effective. What sort of, um, uh, you know, ideas can you give to somebody who's thinking, oh, COVID has just slapped me upside my head. I can't get started. Um, everything has just closed. No one is going to show up because of the restrictions and everything else. What sort of, um, you know, ideas or motivations can you give somebody who who thinks that everything is now lost because of where we are in, in history? As, uh, I often say to individuals, look around, look around at the people you admire, whether they are online, whether it's in your community, your family, your workplace, look at the people you admire. Look at all the professionals. And you will know this one, there's one thing you, they, they all have in common. They were all amateurs at one time. Everyone that you admire right now was once a scared little boy or scared little girl. That's one. Two, the fastest man I've ever run is from the Caribbean, you see him both. So we know him. He is a household name across the world. One of the most decorated athletes on track and field. Yet, less than 1% of the world know of, him, know, know of his coach. <laughs> And the reason is the reason I'm saying this is that regardless of how good you are, you need support. Going at it alone is going to be challenging. I will say to individuals, if you're looking to store, if you are on sure way to store, know that you have a message and get help. Get a help, get a mentor, get an accountability partner, get a, a branded coach. But you need to get help because there are all going to be days when you're going to feel like giving up. I've had my days when I felt like giving up. Thankfully, I have a very supportive wife um, who always reminded me of why I started and who's always encouraging me. I mean, that is like my mentor, accountability partner, and coach all combined. Um, well, and because obviously I can't escape because I'm with her you know, all day in the middle of the night, in the morning, there's no escape. So I would say to those individuals, you know, get some help and start. The thing is start, do not worry about perfectionism because it doesn't exist. Do not worry about what other people are gonna say because there will always be people who will speak negative. Prosper, there are people who love Troy Holder and the people who can't stand Troy Holder and I'm fine with that. So you need to recognize that, you know, there are gonna be people who are gonna love you, some are not gonna love you. You focus on what you are being called to do. You focus on providing solutions focus on providing value, uh, just take action. 
take action. So the one thing that you've been putting off for the longest time is the one thing that you need to do right now. Do it today. Start it today. Because there's one thing I have learned is that nothing is ever really as difficult as it first appears. You see people doing things that seems like, wow, so easy for them. What you did not see is how that, that they started. And every day, and they kept practicing, kept practicing. Look at, look at your child. You have two kids. I mean, when your child fall, that, uh, while they were, they were trying to walk, that did not stop them from getting up and trying again. They got up and tried again. We need to pick a lesson from our kids. You will fail, you will fall, but get up and go again. And I'm not just saying this, get up and go again. Absolutely. This is gonna make the difference. Oh, absolutely, man. Thank you so much for that. Because while I was listening to that, I was just thinking to myself, wow, this is so much um, motivation, education, all packed into one episode. And I really appreciate that. But you you raised a really fantastic point there where you mentioned that Hussein uh, Bolt is the fastest man um, that we know in history currently. And yet we don't quite know um, you know, who his coach is. And then it don't mean that you've also helped businesses, um, you know, build up to a 2.5, uh, you know, valuation in either sales or in growth, yet not a lot of people would have, um, you know, patronized or none of the great Troy Holder. How can people actually get a hold of you so that maybe they too can be do and have a happier existence or businesses that are profitable and enjoyable? Okay. Well, I mean, hey, I mean, you can find me at troyholder.com, troyholder.com for sure. That's my, my domain. Um, I have my brochure site there. But I'm also known as the marketing doc. Yeah, doc as a short for doctor, because I wanted to be a doctor, um, but obviously my, my family couldn't afford to send me to medical school. And I'm a good B student. I wasn't an A plus student, so I know a scholarship was going to be a little challenging. But I decided, well, hey, why should that stop me from being a doctor? I become a doctor of business. Well, I've been calling myself the marketing doc for about the last, what, 20 years? And, and I'll tell you this, right? Uh, I have helped more people as the marketing doc than if I'd become a physician. Because the thing is with a physician, a physician sees people one at a time. I can walk into a classroom. I can walk into a college or university. I can walk into an auditorium and I can speak one to many, 100, 200. 500 persons, and I can change three or 400 lives one time. So I'm the marketing doc. Uh, we help save businesses. We help save lives. We help save relationships. <laughs> I love <laughs> because that. Because if you are married, so you know the challenges of entrepreneurship and balancing your relationships. Yeah. And we help people be more of who they are. I, I love that. I love that. So if you are frustrated with the way your business is going right now and things don't seem to be working or your lead generation is not working or your actual branding is falling on deaf ears. I want you to have no more frustration. The doctor has arrived, all right? Because no yeah, marketing uh, possible. Yeah. <laughs> so sure, I just wanted to add here, so marketing doc um, on Instagram, you'll find marketing doc on Twitter, um, you know, get more sales. But once you search for Troy Holder, um, you will see a lot of information. Troy Holder Marketing, you'll be able to find all of me, uh, where you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, I'm following you, so I'm busier now on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So if, you, if you've been tuning into the show, you obviously got motivation, you obviously got education and a lot of branding um, you know, information that's going to help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And like what Troy has said, you need to vaccinate or inoculate yourself against mediocrity out there. And the doctor, the marketing doctor, as he said, he's um, uh, prevalent in all um, prominent profiles. You know, the reason why you're going to need to speak to Troy is because no two branding challenges are going to be the same. And that's why he will be able to develop a customized solution for you. But you need to schedule this with him because, like I said, he's in Barbados. 
where he's constantly on holiday. Um, so be it coaching strategy or training, why don't you reach out to the marketing doctor and get your own customized brand building marketing process. I really want you to succeed in life. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And the marketing doctor, as he has said, will help you build an expert brand to help you make greater impact so you can actually be of value to those that are um, you're going to be working with. And to steal from the doctor himself, he did say, help enough people get what they want. And he too, and you too will get that which you want. So both uh, the marketing doctor and Zig Ziglar are two men that will help you create a plan for growing your influence to higher levels. Now, doctor, if let's say somebody comes to Barbados and wants to have a holiday, what areas would you recommend? Because after watching this video, they're going to work so hard and then actually make enough money to be able to afford a holiday. Where, where can they come to Barbados and hopefully maybe um, sip a pina colada with you or something of that nature? I'm just asking for a well, friend. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you'll be surprised Barbados is very small. It's just 166 square miles. So we are um, 21 miles at our, our um, long, high, long, and at the widest area, um, it's just about 14. It's almost like the continent of Africa, inverted, <laughs> when you really think of it. But if you're coming to Barbados, you definitely want to try oysters. Um, it's one of our, our fishing villages, um, lots and lots of food. And you definitely want to see Harrison Cave. And if you're here in the summer, um, there's, there's, a, there's a whole host of activities. And for those individuals who are more um, religious, um, we often say in Barbados, um, for every rum shop, there is a church. So there are many churches and many rum shops. So you can, you can pick your battle. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much there, Troy, for taking the time uh, to, you know, grace us with your expertise on this show. Now, if you're watching this right now, just imagine if you could achieve, um, you know, when you're when you have a spirited business growth with a branding professional that is providing you with branding, marketing and training support. I encourage you to reach out to Troy uh, because he's here to empower you, inspire you and challenge you to be more, do more and have more. Just reach out to him and tell him about your goals and challenges. Just don't expect him to do the drawing for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother, man. It was fantastic. Look forward to do this again.
<laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Also, if people don't watch this video, now we know why, because you would have been the one who started there. They don't start by looking. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you're, um, you're doing good stuff, man. Yeah. I've been following um, so you for a while, and I appreciate what you share. I mean, I know you have a passion for helping others also. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm really grateful to be associated with you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, it is a journey and we are all seeking the one thing, you know, because it is our duty to showcase what we can achieve just so that others can be, do and have a happier existence. And, you know, like I said, we're seeking relevance. We're seeking value. We're seeking to, 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 to be there for those that are in need. And I, I also looking at where you are and what you've done and not be bogged down with what's happening around you and just continue to be on focus. That's, that to me is phenomenal, brah. So kudos to yeah. you for being, doing and having uh, what you have now created there. So we're also learning from you, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you this. Uh, my 9-11 was, for me, was preparation for the pandemic. Okay. Uh, because after 9-11, um, there was a, you know, all the restrictions and so forth. I reduced my um, content uh, consumption of, of world news, of local news. I stopped buying newspapers. Actually, today was the first time um, in about six months that I actually you know, read a newspaper, glanced through it. But uh, so, what, so the same thing, I've got that same approach. You know, every morning I get up. I have a seven year old and 11 year old who are gonna ask for breakfast. They don't care about pandemic. They don't care about bills. They don't care about uh, unemployment. All they know is like, daddy, I need breakfast. So I need to ensure that when they ask for breakfast, I can put breakfast on the table. So I get up every morning and I do what I have to do. Now, uh, I'm not ignorant of what is happening, but I'm not gonna allow it to consume me. I'm not getting involved in, in arguments about vaccines and who should be vaccinated. I'm not getting involved in terms of these conspiracy theories. I mean, you know what? I got a job to do. I'm looking for people who are like that, who need to get ahead, and, and I'm going to work with them. Oh, fantastic. So that's well, how I survive, my brother. <laughs> it, and if you've noticed, we were one of the most... Oh, let me stop recording this because I...